Fire extinguisher, run. Whoa. So I've never bought a barn find before or bought a massive project that hasn't ran in over 10 years. So this 1993 Camaro Z28 is a little bit out of my wheelhouse, but since it's so clean, like somebody drove it off the showroom floor, pulled it into their garage and parked it under a tarp for decades, I just couldn't help myself. I also couldn't ignore the price as it seemed like a really good deal after I went searching on Auto Tempest for comparable cars. There weren't many to compare it by and Auto Tempest is also my sponsor for today's video. I can't thank Auto Tempest enough for being a continued sponsor of this channel and for car enthusiasts in general. It's a site that I use on an almost daily basis as it consolidates the search process across all the big car sale websites, allowing you to hit one search button on Auto Tempest to see listings from all the top sites at once, plus other places you might not have thought to check. You can even compare results from Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. What makes Auto Tempest really handy for a compulsive shopper like me is the searches get very specific with their advanced toolbar, which recently got even more specific with search filters like fuel type, like diesel or hybrid, drive type like 4x4 or rear wheel drive, or color. Before I discovered Auto Tempest, I was forced to put the same search parameters in over and over again across different sites. So when I was researching this Camaro before I bought it, one click got me all the listings of early fourth gens in the USA. It was just that easy. And you can get started searching for yourself for free and support me and my generous sponsor by trying out Auto Tempest linked in the description below. Also, go on Auto Tempest and look for another project car because I'm locked in close quarters. I can either stay home or come to the car wizard. So go on Auto Tempest, find a car for me to buy, maybe a project that's not too far gone, but uh, something maybe I haven't thought of and post it in the comment section. Now let's do a tour of this pristine Z28 Camaro that hasn't been started in a really, really long time. So 1993 was the first year of the fourth generation Camaro, and I think when everyone pictures an early fortune in their head, they picture this, a red Z28 Camaro, and personally I like the looks of these way more than the later ones, even though that seems to be the one that everybody put away was the last few years when it had the aluminum LS V8. This one's an LT1 under the hood, which is pretty decent performance, but there's not a lot of these early fourth gen Camaros left that are that are nice, unless they're pace cars or something else. This is just a normal base automatic Z28. But what astounded me is the incredible condition of this car. The story goes that the original owner got it new as a high school graduation present, drove it for many years, but then parked it in his garage, quit driving it, got busy, and then it wouldn't start. And there it sat for more than 10 years. The last time it was actually registered was 2010, as you can see from the old plate and it is just in amazing condition. It actually has 80,000 miles on it, which is quite a bit. You wouldn't expect it considering the condition because it looks brand new. I can't find a single mark or defect on it. I mean, look at these seats. When is the last time you've seen an early fourth gen this clean? And the floor mats, they have floor mats. It's just, just nuts. It has an aftermarket radio in it, but everything else is original except he said, that he put a Flowmaster exhaust on it. Now, I thought he chose to put these rectangular exhaust tips, but when I was doing my research, I guess the first few years of Camaro, they wanted to differentiate the Z28 from everybody else, so they put these rectangular exhaust tips on there from the factory, which is very, very 90s. So this Camaro has not been started in over 10 years. It does turn over. We'll put a new battery in it and see how well it turns over and then start diagnosing from there. That's why we're up here at the car wizard's lair where he is very familiar with fourth generation Camaros. He even owned a Camaro or two back in his day. Where's wizard? There's wizard. So does this bring back memories for you? Yeah, I remember when these came out. Yeah. I was rocking a freshman in high school. Really? Listening to Metallica. Yeah. Did you want one? Yes, I still do. Yeah, it Can is. Can I have this one? <laughs> no, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you'll end up getting it if there's too much work that needs to be done, but it's so nice that uh, I don't, I can't imagine it. It's like this person drove it off the showroom floor and just put it away. But it does have 80,000 miles on it, so it's just really well cared for, except for it sitting for the last 10 years. Visually, you could almost put it back on a dealer lot brand new and sell it again. Yeah. Here, let's pop the hood. There is an LT1. And other than a little layer of dust, it's 
Very, very clean in here. Wow, look at the belt. It's got rust stains in it. Ew. Oh, sure enough. That's been sitting for a while. So even if we do get it running, there's going to be a lot of deferred maintenance and oh, yeah. dry seals and all that kind of stuff. Things that haven't been rotating in a while, and now we're going to start blowing seals. And hmm. But you don't know until you try. Right. Well, I guess we can try. Let's hook this battery up. Got a fresh battery in it, and then we can see if it cranks over and go from there. I think that fuel is going to be the issue on this. Yeah. But also spark, because these yeah. had the weird... Opti Spark that was yes. shared with the Corvettes and like the Buick Roadmaster and all that stuff and they would get a little finicky as well. The water pump would go bad and it would leak all over the Opti distributor and cause all kinds of issues. Mm. All right, well let's start let's start sleuthing here. You gonna hook up that battery? Let's do it. Oh, I have lights. Yes. Okay. It's like a time capsule here. It's making the right bings and bongs. The door's just locked. All right. I'm gonna crank it, wizard. Go for it. Nothing. Oil pressure is popping up though, that's good. Yes, that's very good. Got even compression, sounds yeah. good. Yeah, turning over nice and smooth, but no fire. No fire. So what do you think? I think that I should spray some starting fluid into it and see if it'll take off. Okay. So if the starting fluid works, then that means we have spark but no fuel, correct? Right. I want to make sure the oil is full before we actually... Wow. Yeah. Nice and full at least. A little dirty but full, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, tell me when. Okay. That's something. It came alive. Yeah. So that means we have no fuel, right? Right. I noticed when you were cranking, I heard no fuel pump prime. Mm. I bet the fuel pump is gummed up with bad gasoline. Mm. Well, let's see. Let's give it a little sniff. Oh, man. <laughs> that's a... <laughs> yeah, that's not a pleasant smell. Yeah, I know <laughs> that the, the tank needs to come down based off of that smell alone. Okay, so uh, we'll drop the tank and then you can get a fuel pump coming and and uh, fresh gas and a fuel pump and maybe that's all to get this Camaro running again? That's right. Wow. I think that'll do it. We'll clean the lines out and everything once we get it out. And if it is the pump, we'll replace it. We'll okay. check the, the level gauge, make sure it's not corroded and destroyed. And Perfect. All right. It. Well, push it to the lift, huh? Yeah, let's do it. Oh man, as these tires roll, I can feel the flat spots from sitting for 10 years. Yeah, thump, thump. <laughs> A few of them had gone flat. The pictures from the garage where my friend Bob pulled it out, it, it, it the cobwebs and everything. Oh, wow. Right. Well, the brakes kind of, kind of stop. Wizard, you got new lifts. You like them? They're 10,000 pound lifts so they can lift your excursion. Oh, well that's good. They're much smoother and quieter than the hoopty ones you had. Oh yeah. Well. Very much sturdier. While we're under here, might as well take a pee. Oh. Ooh, looks like a crustacean. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, ah. Well. Look at that water pump's all. Yeah, so the water pump is definitely sweating. So is this crank seal here it looks like, huh? Yeah, sometimes that can be the oil seal that goes to the Opti, up above the Opti there, but it drives the water pump. It's just it's been crusty. sitting. Sitting and sitting and sitting. And yes. look at all the cobwebs here. Oh yeah, spider webs galore. Wow. Transmission pan's leaking. Yep. So, already leaks before we got this thing started. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me on cars that sit. Right. All the stuff that I'm seeing so far is not going to be very expensive. No. Oh. No, very clean under here. Otherwise, I mean, when's the last time you saw an exhaust that looked like this underneath a fourth gen? Well, it's got these stiffeners, frame stiffeners welded in. This is not Whoa. factory. <laughs> yeah, and they're red to match the car. 285 horsepower LT1 engine. Diving into the corners. This is solid rear axle. This is <laughs> definitely of its time, it's huh? Pretty old school. Yep. Solid rear axles. Yeah, looks like he did some drilled and slotted brakes. Yep. So there were some 
mods and improvements here. Here's a mod, a Flowmaster. Right. Thing. Well, the fuel tank. No. Oh. No. Where is it? It's up there. There. Yep. We have to take this exhaust out of the way. Right here. Ah. So we're going to drop the exhaust. Yep. And then that should give us access to the fuel tank. Huh, it is buried up in there. Okay, well, a little bit of work. Yeah, but we can do it. Well, we have our somewhat dual exhaust out of the way enough for us to see the fuel tank, the heat shield's off, and then this bar mostly empty it's out of the way so probably leave the exhaust like this we have plenty of room to yeah I think we're gonna have to take this bar off too because the tanks gonna have to come down like this mm. so we can pull this filler neck down that way I just turned off the camera for a money shot there this bar came down on the wizard's noggin yeah. come here let's examine your noggin am I bleeding no but you got walloped pretty good yeah I felt it you're gonna have a goose egg yeah oh well I did a thing. I got this out. You got another heat shield to where the tank is fully exposed now. Wizard, after checking his wound, has climbed the ladder and is loosening a neck. A filler neck. Move this crowd out of the way. The baby's coming. This is me any any second now. Push! Uh, push! <laughs> this dang aftermarket exhaust is our... Is our enemy. <laughs> it is. Hell, that smells like sewage. Ugh. Yeah. Gross. All right, you done unhooking everything? Almost. And then we're gonna wrestle this baby out. Yep. Well, sit rep, this exhaust has completely kicked our butts. It, uh, won't come out with the exhaust on. Everything is welded on where we have to cut and re-weld and that's a lot of work. Look how sweaty Wizard is. This is taking a lot of the Wizard's strength to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, what's the plan? I can get to it right here. I don't need to take it down anymore. Oh, I see. So you're gonna change the fuel pump with that much room? Yeah. Looks like a squid! Hmm. Okay. A new tank. Fuel? And here's a fuel filter. Oh. And here's our sending unit. Oh, yes. That looks quite long. That folds. Oh, okay. Very nice. Ten seconds later. Oh, man. This isn't going to work. Yeah. We're going to have to cut the exhaust. We're going to hack it. Yeah, we can bit a sleeve and weld it back together it'll be just fine i see so you probably do it on a straight section like like here or so yeah and we could kind of tumble this out and take this okay yeah right about here well sparks are very good for youtube anyway so especially when there's fuel around yeah yeah just 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 saw away yeah Yes! Oh! That is the bane of our existence. And it is now gone. Now let's see what excuse this tank makes for not coming out, huh? Man, I can see that neck back there. There. All right, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start. That's... What is it doing? Well, now we know why the previous owner didn't bother uh, Fixing the fuel pump. Wait, yeah. googly moogly. I've actually never done a fuel pump on one of these. This is my first one. And it's one of the stupidest fuel pumps I've ever seen. You have to drop the axle to get the fuel tank out. To... Ridiculous. So you're dropping the rear axle off the spring onto this jack here to get it low enough because this fuel filler neck has no flexibility to it at all. Most fuel filler necks I've ever messed with have a rubber piece in between that you can undo the clamps and Hmm. be home free but this one's one solid piece all the way up much 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 later all of this springs on the ground axle 
lowered to where it's like a truck. All this disconnected, just for this tank. I've got a couple of hand gestures for this car. <laughs> yeah, you think? Yeah. But it's coming, right? Yeah, it'll come right out. Let's Moment see. of truth. My goodness. That's ridiculous. You want to help uh -oh. get those yes. tangled lines there? Uh, yep. Woo! Look at all that scraping and rubbing. Oh, yeah. Just because this won't flex. Yep. My goodness. And now the final bolt to get to this fuel pump and take a look inside of this tank. The day may be over if this tank looks really nasty. We'll see. Okay. Out you go. Out with you. Yes. So close. Oh. Oh. Gasoline in the face. It flicked me. This this floaty th whatever the heck it was. Oh. It's on my face. How's the tank look in there? Hmm? It's clean. Yeah, nice and clean. Very nice. We'll put it back in and put the thousand piece jigsaw Camaro back together. Get it to run. Maybe, hopefully. If it doesn't run after this, I am going to legit cry. Like, yeah. like cry hard. <laughs> Fuel tank is in, kind of the moment of truth here. Everything's hooked up. Enough to start it and make sure it works. Yes, but do not put it in drive. Do not put it in drive. That would be an that'll, interesting... Yeah, that'll not be good. Yeah, all right, up we go. Whoa, oh. yeah, dang it. Are you all right? No. Your fuel pump? Yeah. Wizard says let it cool down for a minute. There's a lot of air in the lines. Well, he has Mario Turning Point. A lovely mix. Someone made him a mixtape, the previous owner. Mario Turning Point. I don't know what that means. One Republic Dreaming Cat Load. That's what it says. I've never heard that before. Dreaming of a cat load. And a, <laughs> a 2008 Wichita State Parking Pass sticker. I'm a WSU alum. Get up there with some starting fluid. Yeah. Wizard's gonna use that ladder to get up to the engine with some starting fluid. <clears throat> Give her a little help. Oh. Whoa. Ow. Oh. Ah. There. That's all it needs. Get the floor. Oh. All right. Well, we, we tried. Yeah. We gave it the old good college try there. Oh, uh, well, um, that was <coughs> it's a complete fail on multiple levels. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing I have these handy. Ah. <sighs> So, plan now is to put the rear end back together. We know we're getting plenty of fuel pressure. So now it's somewhere between the fuel railing and the injectors, whether you crack them open, or what do you think we'll do? The injectors, I may need to pull them out and just get them to work and work themselves free. They may be gummed up. They may be bad. Replace them, and then probably a running car that won't catch fire? I think so, it wants to run It was so it close. 
Yeah. Except for our backfire fire scenario. It did technically run under its own power for a, a few seconds. So this, it was a start. It was a start. We're getting there. It's a start. It, it started for the first time in, in 10 years and then caught fire. I guess I'll check back in with you tomorrow if I can, or the baby may pop out and this may be the end of the video. But uh, otherwise, thank you for watching, maybe. Or maybe it'll continue on to the next one. I don't know. We'll see. The next day. Well, I'm back. I'm kind of surprised that I'm back, but no baby just yet. We're back at the Car Wizard, and a lot of progress has been made. The Camaro is back together and out on its own. I'm yeah. sorry I missed all the fun this morning, Wizard. Oh, it was fun. Yeah, well, I was at the doctor's office with my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, they put the balloon and to uh, pop things to make the baby come. A, a what? Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> wow. well, by the time this video comes out uh, tomorrow, there'll be uh, a baby uh, coming or out. A baby Hoover. I'm excited to meet the little boy. Thank you, yeah. On the drive home, I listened to some of the, the CDs that I found in this Camaro and it wasn't the kind of music that I thought a Camaro owner would have. Was it orchestra music or something? No, 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 no. I put it in his work mix, and yeah. a lot of it was Nickelback and John Mayer. John Mayer. That doesn't go go with a Z28, really. No, not at all. But that, that's, <laughs> that's all I've done in the last 24 hours. It looks like you've done a lot. So this starts. We'll get to that in a bit. But how did you get it to start? Well, we got the fuel system as far as the fuel tank forward running and working, fuel pressure, but it still wouldn't start yesterday. The injectors f were physically gummed up so bad they couldn't even click or work. Oh. So I set this up here. This is mm -hmm. actually BG fuel system cleaner. I see. It was clear when I put it in, but after I soaked your injectors, the, all that gum, that brown color is from the injectors. Oh, so this, this stuff in the bottom here, yeah, that's that what came, came out. Right. That was all inside gummed up. Huh. But basically all I did was put a little of the fluid down in the inlet here. Yeah. I had Junior Mint help me, but I would actuate it like this. I have a battery hook to this. I see. So, so that's I, forcing the injector to open. Yeah, you have to work it a few times. And while I was doing that, I had Junior Mint blow air with this gun into the inlet. I see. And blow it out. Hmm. And you just keep doing that. Several of these, we would do this and it wouldn't even click. It wouldn't do anything. So it just took some massaging until it eventually woke up? Yeah, finally they click and they start working and clean them out. And we did all eight of them and it's alive. Really? Yeah. Okay, well I missed the first official start, but oh well. Look at it. It's on the ground. Everything's back together. Is the exhaust hooked back up? It is. It's ready to go. Okay, well... It won't catch fire this time, right? No, no fire. Okay, good. Yes. Oh, it just cracks right over. Look at this. There's no lights on the dash other than the seat belt, and it's idling smooth. And good oil pressure. Yeah, good oil pressure. Happy engine. It yes. Sounds amazing. Yeah. Okay, well maybe I'll take it around the block and see how it feels, the brake pedal. Doesn't inspire a lot of confidence, but it goes into gear. Yeah. It moves. It's alive. Well, I just tried to roll up the window and it broke right at that moment as we pulled outside because I wanted to see if the air conditioning worked. And the air conditioning doesn't work. Maybe it just needs a charge. That's what they always say. But let's take it out. The brakes feel okay enough for me to Accelerate. Welcome my seatbelt here. All right. And yes, it goes. <laughs> the tires feel like squares, though. <laughs> it definitely goes. All right. And it stops. Brakes work. I'm not going to hit a child on rollerblades. That's great. <laughs> it's been 10 years since this thing has moved under its own power and it's running really well, surprisingly well, but now I'm going to give it the beans. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> Brakes do not inspire a lot of confidence though. Oh yes. Awesome. Well, there's only one more thing left to do. I think you guys know it's a Camaro. I, I, I have to do it. Oh yeah, this is 
what a Camaro is born to do. And we're helping to round out these tires. Wizard, wizard. Somebody had a good time in my parking <laughs> yes. lot. It's, it is running fantastically. There's still a lot to do, but it's running. It's alive. I'm so happy. Yes. Well, you know, to pay to play, that's the old term they say. I have a bill for you inside. Really? Yeah. How much? $1,350. One, $1,350. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just getting started. Yes, that's There's... my fun. Now it's time for me to have fun. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Well, $1,300 is a lot of money, but I just got to be in high school again. That felt so good. But there's still a long ways to go to get this thing truly roadworthy and, and, and back to where it was in its glory days. Uh, it's going to take a lot of time, parts, money, uh, but uh, I think it's going to be worth it. Thank you for watching.